I'm Rach and this is Pregnant Potato. So the video that I wanted to do today was one that particularly helped me at the very very beginning of our pregnancy journey and what I ended up doing was watching a lot of TTC videos on YouTube. So TTC stands for trying to conceive. So this vlog is all about tips and tricks that we did that helped so let's get to it. So the first thing that I would say is stay off all forums, chat rooms, anything like that. I found them very negative, quite scary what the women were saying about um, I want to get pregnant to trap my boyfriend and all this stuff and it was just, it was really unhelpful and it was just a lot of women worrying about trying to conceive and there wasn't a lot of valuable information. So what I would say from the start as well is just to be careful of people's opinion and uh, medical fact. Again, I'm saying that this is my opinion, but the, I would stay off all pregnancy forms. Just, just don't do it. One of the things that really helped myself and Mark, and not a lot of people do this, is but whenever we got engaged in 2012, we kind of set out a timeline of our life and what we wanted for the next 10, 15 years. There were a lot of varying factors to that. I, at the time, whenever we got engaged, was struggling to qualify as a solicitor. I qualified in 2017, and a lot of our plans were based around my career because I wanted to be practicing for a couple of years before I had a child, yet at the same time, didn't want to wait too long. So it was a bit of a balancing act, and there was flexibility, there wasn't rigidity, as in, no, it's 2017 now, we must have a baby. What really helped us was having a plan, set it out. So 2012 we got engaged, 2015 we got married, 2017 I qualified and then we wanted to have a baby around 2020. So everything has worked out that way. The reason I say it's so important as well is because you obviously have to plan to physically have a baby but also there's things, gosh, there's so many things around. When we were engaged, we lived in Mark's apartment and now we have a house. So you've got the location of where do you wanna live? Do you move to a good school district? And it's, it's things like financial planning as well. So putting those savings away because when you're on maternity leave, it depends on whether or not your place of work has a good maternity policy. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. So what I would say is think of all the different variables. Think of, do you see yourself in a house? Do you see yourself in an apartment? Do you see yourself in a country, in a city? How many cars can you afford? Can you afford a family car? And put those savings in place. And if this is something that has happened to you and you haven't planned, don't worry. There's still loads of time to set a plan in place. It can be a short-term plan, a long-term plan, but even to write things down in my head just makes things so much easier for me. So that's what I would recommend doing. My second tip for trying to conceive would be to have goals in mind and that kind of ties into the planning side of it. So you've kind of got your timeline of roughly what you want to do. Don't be too rigid with it. You know, getting pregnant might happen for you straight away or it might take a while, but even have goals in place. So have financial goals, have career goals in place. Be like, you know, I want to hit this point before I do this. But again, don't set them in stone as in I can't get pregnant before I make associate or before I, you know, have enough money to put away for a second car or something like that or a first car. I don't even have my own car. There's a lot to consider. So what I would say is set goals for yourself and that kind of ties in with the planning. The planning is more along the timeline sort of things, roughly kind of when you're thinking of this, that and all the other and then have goals in place. I want to have X amount of savings. I want to be able to invest this much money. By the time the kids are 20, that's in 30 years time, you know, d d different things like that. Kind of not plan out your life. That really can stress some people out, but not for me, I'm a planner. But if, if it helps you, then do that. So planning and goals are my first two tips. Okay. Now on to the more practical reality side of it, what we did in order to prepare. So we prepped our bodies for about a year before we knew we wanted to start trying. We started trying in June 2019 and we actually got pregnant within the second month, which was very, very fast and we were very, very fortunate. What we did the year before is Mark and I would be generally quite healthy. We would exercise three to four times a week. We would have a really good diet. So we made sure to up our salmon intake, up our fish intake, um, eat lots of fresh fruit and vegetables. It's kind of, it wasn't really anything different for us, but just 
cut down on the rubbish and the crap and we had noticed in December 2018 we were having at like a bottle of wine a week maybe you know gins at the weekend so we severely cut that down as we were going along we were at a family wedding in Valencia in June 2019 and after that trip we both stopped drinking and I had said to Mark like he can if he wanted to but he actually stopped drinking from the June we were pregnant in the July all the way to our holiday in Spain in September uh, because he wanted to challenge himself to see if he could do it and you know what it helped me so much with my hyperemesis because oh the smell of booze is just would have been too much for me um, god bless him so he did he gave up alcohol as well and I I've only recently started to miss it I'm currently 35 weeks pregnant today he probably well you can kind of tell <laughs> whenever I stand up but I've only I think it's just because it's something that's really cold I'm craving cold cold things like ice lollies cold apples diet cokes really cold water you know so I think that's one of the reasons that a wee, wee glass of wine would be lovely now but I'm near the end so I'm not gonna do that yes so that's what I would say it's by prepping your body is tip number three and what we did is so no alcohol really healthy eating exercise just generally be good to, and be kind to yourself we started taking the pregnant care before conception for him and for her and I'll put a picture of the box up here and we started taking those about um, have we started trying in the June in and around the February time February 2019 and it was just to make sure we were as healthy as possible so I would definitely recommend those what I also did whenever I was eating healthily and everything like that was I would have smoothies and um, smoothie balls and I really really enjoyed them beautiful and refreshing during the summer but what I also did was I added in maca powder into my smoothie so on my Instagram there is a highlight and it's a smoothie highlight and again not a nutritionist just someone who enjoys their food I would make strawberry and banana smoothies with some coconut yogurt and oh they taste so good and I would put in a bit of collagen powder and I would make chocolate ones with cacao and everything oh so tasty one of the things that I started to do was add in maca powder the maca plant originates in Peru and apparently as a wedding present if you are from Peru you get the maca root because it's meant to help it's meant to boost energy and fertility or something like that again not nutritionist I tried it anyway got pregnant within the second month if there are things that you want to research and add to your food and supplementing and things like that always check with your doctor first or a nutritionist someone who is qualified and not just someone on youtube sharing tips the final thing about preparing your body is the reduction of caffeine now for those of you who know me and mark you know that coffee is our thing our wedding was coffee themed we went to australia and melbourne and we drank so much good coffee oh such good coffee um we are coffee snobs mark doesn't like that term but we we love our coffee love 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 it's our thing but it got to a stage before i knew it i was having six tiny little espresso shots a day it got to a point where i was like right i need to cut down on the caffeine because i would get jitters and i would I would just feel so tired and so fatigued so I started to wean myself off a year before and I cut down to five to four to three to two to one and I did that very gradually because I'm very sensitive to caffeine so if I give it up completely which I did for Lent god about three or four years ago now and it wasn't fun but I had the worst headache for about four or five weeks and again I, I suffer from migraines, haven't had any in a while, but I'm, I'm, I'm a sensitive soul and um, I would be very sensitive to things like that. So the reduction of caffeine was another thing for like preparing my body, kind of what I was ingesting and, and food to prepare your body. So, so I would definitely recommend doing that as well. Point four uh, would be to speak to your doctor. I had a phone call with a doctor and I just said, I am thinking of having a baby. Is there anything I need to do? And he had said about vitamins, uh, taking care of myself, uh, exercise, how much, you know, I weighed, things like that. And we had a really good chat. Um, one of the points that he raised was contraceptives. So I cannot take the pill because of my migraines and the mini pill just doesn't work with my body. And I have nothing to be removed. So that was handy enough. But note if you want to start trying for a baby, speak to your doctor about the contraceptive that you're on and 
because it can take like a year or two years for your body to like normalize as well with the with the hormone fluctuations so definitely speak to a medical professional not a doctor definitely speak to a medical professional just about what you should do in preparation for that tip number five most women i think do this anyway just to know but have a period tracker on your phone and it's really really simple the one i use is just a free one it's called my like it says about the pregnancy and stuff obviously at the minute because i'm pregnant but you can um track your cycle and your calendar and everything and put your notes in but the interesting thing i think about this is i think most books say that you are ovulating on day 14 that's not right for everybody that's not the same for everybody it's just that average so it's really important to be able to kind of track your cycle and the week that you're ovulating so you have your period and then you ovulate and then you've got two weeks after that so it's about picking the right times for you around your ovulation for you to try to have a baby the books say no more than once a day because apparently the potency oh what a word of the sperm deteriorates if you do it more than once a day so top tip so that was tip I think about a period tracker and just kind of knowing your body and knowing when you're ovulating. So the next tip, I always lose track, are we on number six, number seven? The next tip, anyway, once you've had your period and you're on your ovulation week, you can get little ovulation tests. These are just ones we picked up from Tesco's and that's basically this is what they look like. And you just pee on the stick. I found these really hard to read. And I thought I actually missed an ovulation day because the line was so faint. But if you line them all up next to each other, there was nothing, nothing, very faint line, and then nothing, nothing. And that faint line was actually the day I ovulated. So these are just Tesco's own. We were just trying them out. Yeah, handy. Because as I said with ovulation, it's not the same for everybody. These, were, these weren't great. Maybe a better brand might be better. But anyway, ovulation sticks. Last two TTC tips gosh that's hard to say, is we purchased this book. So what to expect before you're expecting. We like to do a lot of research, we're planners, and it was just something to read. So I went through it with my <laughs> highlighter and any parts from me in yellow and any parts from Mark in blue. And it's just basically what to do. So it kind of went through about a fertility diet per se, basically eat healthily, don't drink loads, don't smoke, don't do drugs. But one of the most interesting things was about your basal body temperature. And so I bought this little basal thermometer just off of Amazon and you literally just turn it on and pop it in. Thirty-five-five ohm. The reason you do this is because you're trying to predict whenever you're ovulating. So along with the ovulation test and the period tracker, it's a good way to try to keep track of when you are ovulating. Keep this on your bedside table, pop it in first thing in the morning and read your temperature before you even stand up or anything. Um, I don't remember it ever taking that long to beat, but then I normally did it that I was half asleep. And then with most period trackers, there's a way to record your temperature in it as well. I find the temping really difficult to follow so this is what the temperature chart looks like kind of on the app that i use and you just keep a note of it every day but it's really like my temperature was kind of all over the place and it would spike at one point so temping for me i just couldn't read the chart correctly and no matter what it said in the book i just find it a wee bit more difficult it was it was interesting to do was it helpful potentially if you can read it properly but what I did find helpful was this book you're like me and you like to plan you know you like to prep and it's something that you've never considered before because you've had your plan and you didn't need to think about it you didn't want to think about it kind of getting into the right mindset was the best thing about this book what it didn't do it said about like getting pregnant and there's a what to expect when you're expecting book which is much much thicker which I'm looking at on my windowsill right now. But whenever we actually got pregnant, because we got pregnant so quickly, I was so overwhelmed. And it was things like, you can't eat deli meats. What's deli meat? Does that mean ham in a pack? Does that mean cold sausages? For me now, it means cold chorizo, salami, pepperoni, things like that. Cooked pepperoni I've only started eating uh, recently in the third trimester on top of pizza, because it's great. And it's cooked all the way through. 
uh, your lettuce you have to check that's washed so if you go different places for your different salads I had to ask the lady like do you wash your lettuce she's like of course I wash my lettuce who doesn't wash their lettuce and I was like oh no I've just had like really bad food poisoning um, <sighs> just some, some, some lie and there's so many different things that you're just so scared of when you're first pregnant and it's very overwhelming I use a lot of beauty products on my face and you can't use like I think it's it's a vitamin I don't know if it's a vitamin A or an E it's some kind of vitamin that you're not meant to use so basically retinoids are out and you can't use any retinols on your face and I had just perfected my beauty routine just checking all my beauty products like what's in this what's in this hairspray stopped using hairspray stopped having baths because if the temperature was too high it could cause miscarriage it was just very very fearful of a lot of things but then after we had the 12 week scan and the wee baby was okay. I started to become a lot more confident because the baby's gonna be all right. I didn't want to live my life worrying because I'm gonna be worrying about my child for the rest of my life, but I want to be, I didn't want that internal stress and adrenaline to affect the baby because the baby feels everything that you feel. So if you're stressed all the time, the baby's gonna be stressed all the time. So yeah, this book was good for getting us into the mindset of we've arrived at this point now because I find it very, very strange that we were trying to get pregnant because beforehand it had been like it's not part of the plan it's always been a thing it's like no pregnancy is pushed to the back of your mind you know and we've got a plan and it's it's in the future and it's really weird when the future then becomes now and you're you know buying things like thermometers and books and you're starting to clear out the study for the nursery and you're starting to prep so this was really helpful for me it's kind of not common not all of it's common sense some of the sciencey stuff is really interesting but like with your if you're a healthy eater you're exerciser you know a lot of the stuff anyway about non-smoking and bmi and all that type of stuff i think it's good to get you in the right frame of mind but yes i am absolutely rambling now so i'm going to stop and i'm going to leave the video here i hope you liked it i'm not saying that these are foolproof methods and these will definitely get you pregnant but this is what we did to prepare for our baby and it worked for us and I really, really hope that it works for you too if that's what you want. Next in the Pregnant Potato series will be my first trimester vlog slash first trimester tips and tricks. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.